Alonzo Perry, good morning to you. Good morning. How you doing, Rob? Excellent. Thank you kindly. So uh, I, I see there's some openings at Fox News. Uh, are, are, you, <laughs> are you interested? Are you looking at, I, well, I don't, I'm not interested. You're not I, interested? You know, no. I bet that pays well. That's a seven-figure gig. That's probably, yeah. I, I, I think that's a lot of heat, though. You know, I, I, I like West Virginia. I feel, I feel safe here. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I want to go up there, hang out with the coastal elites. I don't think that's for me. For that late-night time slot, you've got a lot on your shoulders to yeah. follow up that hack there. You've got to make stuff up. You've got to pretend you believe it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I... I think that Tucker Carlson has done, you know, a, a great job in his role. But, you know, I, we're ready for some fresh blood, and I think that's you, you know. You, uh, you know maybe you, I'll follow him behind you. you got to pretend know? you're friends with people and then write texts about how much you hate them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you, you can't – I mean, if you're going to torture your bosses publicly, eventually it's it's not going to work out for you. Well, what yeah. I want to see is one of those point-counterpoint, you know, tours, you know, steel cage match, Tucker Carlson and Don Lemon. They should just do that, a show together. I think. Do a show together would be pretty awesome. What would mm. be really cool would it be if he ran for president now. You know, I think that with Don yeah. Lemon as his vice president. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know about that. Let's flip I, it. You want to go Don Lemon on the top of the ticket and we, Tucker Carlson on the bottom? Did you see Joe Biden was told he's mm -hmm. running for president? He had made that announcement this morning. Yeah, yeah. and he will be uh, the Democratic front runner, even though he's not polling particularly well, even in his own party. And it looks like uh, Trump uh, uh, Biden part two is coming down the uh, the road here. Well, I, unfortunately, I think there's only one Republican candidate that, that polls underneath Biden in the general, and that's Donald Trump because so many people in the middle just hate him. They hate him. I mean, it's they don't look at what policies did. They don't look at the the great things that happen. They just hate the man. Well, there's that, a lot of baggage there, bro. Oh, there's no. I'm not. I'm not arguing with you there. There's a lot of baggage. There's a lot of. There's a, there's lot, a of lot of baggage there. I mean, it's just. I mean, if we got these two again, I mean, it's it's bad. I mean, I'm I am not excited about this at all. I have nothing against senior citizens, but is there nobody <laughs> under the age of eighty that wants to run for president in this country? Well, no, and I mean, Joe Biden has. I mean, like him or hate him, he served his country for a heck of a long time, and he's. He's, I mean, he's he's done well. I mean, he's he's been on the right side. He's been on the wrong side, as all politicians have. But I mean, he's at least given his all for what fifty years. I mean, you know, take the gold watch and and let somebody maybe a little younger. I mean, I think both parties have some have some younger people that are ready to step up. I mean, these people, you know, they also they don't, they don't want to give up uh, their their systems of control as well, you know, and uh, it's it's kind of hard to see because we know Biden's not in control, you know. I don't I don't think that there's much of his uh, his his faculties that are firing on all cylinders. I don't think that it's fair to you know say that uh, uh, anyone right now, even independents, have confidence in his leadership. Uh, I think that what I uh, kind of caught me off guard was more or less how effective he's been in getting a lot of uh, pieces of devastating legislation through. You know, I did not think that uh, he would be able to get, you know, all these bills passed in a lot of his executive orders. Um, the most recent one being that mortgage one that, Ugh. you know, penalizes people. I mean, no one predicted, you know, uh, this type of presidency. And uh, the midterms, you know, didn't turn out as well as uh, the Republican Party liked. But I think that that, you know, needs to send us back to the drawing board in, in terms of branding and, and how we're talking to people and, um, you know, getting to the core of our identity and saying that we have an alternative vision for this country that, you know, the Democratic Party is not offering. And, uh, you know, that's going to take some legwork. And I'm, I'm hoping to see that 2024, you know, just turns out to be uh, – uh, a, a better year well, for pe people blame Joe Manchin for part of Biden's success. But what you really need to do is go back to the election and go back to Georgia and the runoff and blame Donald Trump because Trump sabotaged that election. He basically told people, listen, Republicans, don't vote in Georgia. It's going to be a corrupt election. Don't vote in the runoff because they're not going to count your votes and they're not going to win. Be so because he wasn't getting his way with the presidential election. His ego got in the way of Georgia, and he tipped the balance of the Senate to the Democrats, which allowed Joe Manchin to assume the position of leverage that he assumed. And really, Joe Manchin was the president the first two years. Yeah. yeah. But and, and this legislation, if you don't like Biden's legislation, you don't like his policies or his four years, 
go back to Trump sabotaging the Georgia runoff. And nobody blames Trump for that because people are afraid to criticize Trump on the Republican <laughs> side because he'll go after you. But shame on Republican voters at the same time. I don't care what Trump says. I'm going to vote the way that I know I need to vote go, in a given election. Go back four you know? years, Matt. Yeah. And oh, remember, I understand. When he spoke, Republicans were following, yeah. right? He spoke and they went down to the Capitol. He spoke, they didn't vote in Georgia because they were told their votes wouldn't count by Trump. But that's why it's... It, it can't be about the person. It's got to be about the politics. It's got to be about the principles that the party stands for, the things that you believe and stand for. And even if that president says, hey, th you, you should vote this way, nah, I don't think so. You right. know, I still have my own mind. I still have the ability to weigh things out and look at a situation. How could Republicans in Georgia not look at that situation and go, I think we'd be better off with our guy in than with their guy in, even though, the, no, don't go out and vote. Are you familiar with the, I don't know, mental acuity of the general electorate? Well, that's part I mean, of the issue. I, I hate to say it like that, but there are a heck of a lot of people who know absolutely nothing. They mm -hmm. care about knowing nothing. They look at whoever their their party is, whoever mm -hmm. their, their demigod is, and they say, all right, well, he says that, I'm in. Alonzo, you, yeah. you were shaking your head no when I was saying that Trump sabotaged the Georgia runoff four well, years ago. I, and the only reason why I'm shaking my head is because I, you know... Because you're afraid to criticize to, Trump because they'll come after you next. Well, <laughs> no, no. I, I, I mean, I do like, Trump. I like Trump's policies. I like, you know, uh, I think that most Republicans feel like Trump should get off Twitter, you know, but uh, that's that's their criticism. It's not on the way that he governs or how he runs the country, and mm -hmm. I think that he's an effective leader. Uh, I love his foreign policy. You know, that was one of my uh, favorite things about him, you know. Yep. But uh, we can go to a, a more recent example of this kind of uh, not knowing uh, what Republicans stand for just by looking at that uh, Wisconsin election right for the Supreme Court justice over there and they had ballot issues that you know were things like bail reform and things that you know uh, uh, liberals often are more have a higher propensity of, of voting for and while they voted for the liberal candidate they went and voted very conservatively against the ballot initiatives. So it's either we're not getting our message across and saying that, you know, all of these criminal justice reforms are not a platform of our party. You've seen it play out in other places. This is not good for the country, you know, and saying um, that this is what we stand for. And and really educating that electorate that we know is, is is sitting here and just voting for who they see more. And and Democrats are also starting to outspend Republicans. You know, uh, that plays a big fact in in being able to get their messages. And did that uh, did the did the money tip when Roe v. Wade was overturned, Alonzo? Did that start to rally a lot of Democratic money? I would say it was before then. I would say uh, around 2020 when uh, the Black Lives Matter protests started going, you started to see a transition of corporate power starting to spend far heavier into uh, Democratic elections. And, and really, I mean, even the tech boom was kind of that slow march if we want to find like where it detonated. Well, that's true. But, uh, you know, you have to realize that these corporate entities, they wanted to uh, kind of make a partnership with what our modern day democrats are today um the, that partnership is is reliant on the fact that you know as long as we don't talk about their corporate greed and their problems anymore uh we'll back your social issues and then you've seen this merger and that's what esg is that's what a lot of these developments um i believe that uh these corporate entities are taking to back a lot of what democrats say is it's a fusion you know and and I don't know where that's came from or how that's truly started, but um, ever since then, that's when uh, we've really started to see Democrats just completely mopping the floor with us in regards to spending. I mean, sometimes 10 to 1 in some of these critical elections. Well, there's also Soros. I mean, a lot of a lot of money is, is getting funneled all sorts of places. Mm -hmm. um, the I mean, I, I personally think the Roe versus Wade, I mean, you watched how the poll numbers changed after that. I mean, a lot of people get so polarized by one issue that they'll they'll drop everything they have to defend that one issue that that most likely will never affect them or their family at the to the detriment of every other issue to the detriment of every other thing that actually would affect their families and their lives yeah no it's it's it, we're in trying times right now and i think that you know it, it, when we look at um whether it's people's stances on abortion. I mean, you know, 
we have to think about this case. And pe too many people think that, you know, Republicans are the ones that have just, you know, overnight taken abortion right now. The court case was, you know, a, a, res a restoration of what is supposed to happen in our judicial system. The judges are not doctors. And so what had happened with Roe versus Wade was you had a, a Supreme Court that started to say what week is viable for certain abortions and, and created some uh, like almost a medical list of, of when to have these you know abortions. And so uh, what the Supreme Court has done is said that that decision that they made was not a judicial decision. Decision. That had nothing to do with uh, make, tying to what the Constitution can do. This is an issue that belongs to states. And so it like brought up a lot of the abortion issue. And I think that, you know, while me being pro-life, you know, I want my state to not have abortion. I don't, I don't think that that's something that I, I, I want here. But I don't think a lot of people around the country, they saw that as Republicans doing it and not a court Re returning a mechanism of legal precedent back to its well, structure. Well, and that and that makes sense. But going back to what I said before, we have an uneducated electorate. Yeah. They don't see that. They don't understand that. I mean, the federal government has overreached so far from where the Constitution intended, and it's just just one more one more thing that the federal government really didn't need to have its hands in. Chris mm -hmm. Chernock on our Facebook page, John said, "You just described Republican voters." Uneducated electorate. Oh, I'm describing. I'm describing the voters of both parties. I don't think I, the I, voters I of either party are taking the time to learn the issues to understand how the issues and how the candidates affect their lives. I mean, I think too many people are just. I'm a Democrat. Guys got a D. I'm voting. I'm a Republican. Guys got an R. I'm voting. Well, in the, that's one of our main problems in America today. The main don't problem is the issues. There, there aren't enough Democrats on the ballot. To be able to vote for a Democrat if you wanted to in West Virginia. Look at how many unopposed races there have been. Really, the election now is the primary for, what, 90% of the uh, the state uh, uh, um, offices in terms of delegate, senator, whatever. There's no mean, real de Democrat and challenger. They, and they, hey, before we run out of time, I want to make sure we get this in with Alonzo, too, because Jim Justice is expected to announce on Thursday that he will be a candidate for the U.S. Senate seat Joe Manchin currently holds and that Alex Mooney has already filed for on the Republican side. Uh, tell me about your feelings regarding that announcement first, Alonzo, and then give me a preview of a Mooney Justice primary. So uh, I, I think that, you know, we were all kind of expecting this. I, I believe that, you know, there was no indication that uh, Justice wasn't going to run. A lot of people speculated. News articles were supporting it. And I think that even if Jim Justice was thinking, you know, maybe maybe I shouldn't or something, this was uh, something that, that definitely motivated his decision. I think that there is a, a, a group of people in the state that say that Jim Justice is their guy and so forth. But um, looking at how I think that this uh, race is going to go, I mean, is – it's a very difficult thing to to comprehend and and to kind of say you know for sure how this election's going to come out you have uh jim justice who's very popular with uh, people in the southern part of the state, mm -hmm. even some of the northern part of the states and then you have Alex Mooney, who every time you know we try to count him out, he you know sweeps an election uh, you know we got to see him go against McKinley and take nearly all of McKinley's districts. Uh, that were, you know, pledged to him and already belonged to his district. And I think that that's an incredible feat. And so I'm I'm wondering, you know, uh, how Alex Mooney is going to face the challenge of going against Jim Justice. But I do believe that um, with, you know, the, the, the experience that he has, his record, which is, you know, something that really safeguards uh, him from, you know, attacks. I, I think that that's why, you know, they've only attacked him personally. There's going to be a lot to look at here from Justice and, and Mooney's race. And uh, I think this is going to be a very high spent uh, campaign, even in the primary and even more so when it comes to the general election. Matt Miller. Which one of those two candidates do you see maybe having a more likely opportunity to defeat Joe Manchin, who in and of himself is an extremely popular representative of our state? I think right now, I think the polls are correct to assume that Jim Justice has a favorable swing in the primary and would probably, as of today, um, 
have a better chance of beating Joe Manchin. Uh, I do think that that's subject to change, and I do think that that's something that uh, can be looked at, you know, from a, a multitude of ways. But I'd say right now, Jim Justice would be probably the the guy to beat mm-hmm. Joe Manchin. Do you think that one vote that Manchin had on the big Biden bill, do you think that is the death knell? Do you think that is what will make it where, whether it's Justice or Mooney, Manchin will lose? I think that, you know, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act was a complete disaster. And I think that, uh, you know, I had talked about this months ago, and some people were telling me that there are good qualities in it, good qualities. Well, now he's even walking back on it, you know, and saying, wow, you know, I I did mess up. I, I, I got duped, you know, and, and now, you know, um, our state's going to hurt because of it. But I don't think that him walking back on it is going to, you know, uh, change or influence the outcome. I think that uh, West Virginia as a whole is – completely done with the mothership of the Democratic Party. And I believe that they've completely abandoned West Virginia. And I don't believe that uh, Joe Manchin could win a city council race at this point. I I agree. I mean, I think that's the day the music died. I think Mm -hmm. when he cast that vote, it was done. He had a lot of goodwill in the state still. I mean, people have loved him forever. I mean, I've met him a number of times. Really nice guy. He's done a lot for West Virginia. But the day he backtracked and voted for that bill and allowed that bill to go through when he was the one person in America who could stop it, that was the day he lost the election. Yeah. Yeah, No, no. it ain't over yet. Right. And especially when you consider, I would imagine that this Republican primary is not going to be a pretty one because there, there will be some, and, and some of it obviously will be truth when it comes to records that they will go back and forth at one another. But I can imagine that, that even in the production and presentation of some of those truths will be some, some jabs here and there that, that could make it a little ugly. Will that impact people deciding, okay, whoever comes out of there, you know, I still like Manchin better based on all of those things. It's, it, primaries to me are fun because it's, it's a fine line sometimes between trying to make sure you win the primary, but, you know, not beating each other up to a point where you can't go win the actual fight. Yeah. There's a story on Metro News today as Justice gears up for Senate run. Republican rival Mooney calls him a rhino and says he can, <laughs> he can, he can beat him. And, yeah, obviously, uh, Justice is going to go after Mooney for the fact that he moved here from Maryland. Mm-hmm. And Mooney's going to go after the fact that Justice has been a Republican, a Democrat, a Republican, a Democrat. They both have baggage in terms of issues. Uh, there is an eth- ethics investigation regarding uh, Congressman Mooney. And as far as Justice is concerned... Uh, I mean, it's it's line up outside the door and, and hold your tax receipt as to how much you know money he, you say he owes you. There's another story in regards to uh, uh, a, a suit that's going on with a development that he was involved in, and I guess uh, he doesn't specifically run it now. Family members run it, but uh, homeowners association is claiming that he owes back fees of six million dollars or something to that effect. So. Uh, for a lack of better words, I think the, the ethics investigation on Alex Moody's junk. And when you start to go and look at the, the, the actual merits of the case, I mean, I don't think that the, the investigation itself will prove fruitful. Um, federal, you know, uh, election regulations are completely just a tangled web of nonsense. You know, this is the kind of stuff that stops your everyday average people from wanting to run for office is, mm-hmm. you know, getting into the weeds of this. And that's what it, it, it's really panning out to. Uh, the stuff that justice is going through is, uh, I mean, that's a, a problem, I guess, with having, you know, a billion dollars. I mean, there, there, the complicated regulations of how banking and stuff works and uh, them actually, you know, moving to steal or take uh, certain portions of his wealth uh, to to pay off, I guess, some debts. I, I don't know the, the 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 merits or or the containment of you know what's what's going on there. But uh, well, there are a lot of people who say he owes the money. I would, yeah, yeah, I would, governments I would, alike. I wouldn't mind trying that burden of having a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I know it'd be a burden. I, listen, but I, mo money, mo problems. <laughs> yes, sir. You got it. <laughs> If you have a billion in assets, that's one thing. But if you have a billion five in debts, that's another thing. It kind of wipes out all the assets. So I'm not sure what the governor's debts are, but there are a lot of people who claim he owes them money. Yeah. No. And I'm sure it doesn't help that the coal industry is you know, under attack, too. So, I mean, there may be some merit to 
uh, the, some of the financial issues he's having. But well, the governor's uh, race, Alonzo, is a fascinating uh, mix of a lot of big names and heavy hitters there, and is. Morrissey appears to be leading the bunch. Yeah, surprisingly, I think uh, you know uh, Patrick Morrissey's a, a really good candidate. I think that people are uh, excited to come and, and and see him make this endeavor just from you know checking out his social media pages and seeing the response to his announcement um, here in the Eastern Panhandle. Um, a lot of people went to see it and said that you know he he had a great energy that he brought. Um, there's some fierce competition, you know. I think that uh, from Mac Warner, the uh, you know, and what he's done for our elections, whether JB uh, McCuskey and and how he's brought transparency to government finance to more capital, being you know someone in the Senate just judiciary that uh, was seen as kind of a leader to um, different people, and I know there's other people in the race like Rashida Yost and and uh, others, but it, it's definitely going to be a a contentious race, and I'm wondering if um, the field will start to clear, you know, as we get closer to you know signing date with the secretary of state in january or if you know people are all in and wheels up and are you better have seven figures to spend in that race yeah no that well club for growth given uh patrick morsey's campaign 10 million is definitely a sign that you know uh he is going to be a he is the person to beat why, why why would they do that because whatever Republican you get is probably going to be more conservative than Justice mm -hmm. was, considering he came in as a Democrat. There's virtually no chance a Democrat wins that seat. Why give so much money in that election to a seat that would seem to be a red seat no matter what? Well, I think that if I'm, uh, you know, a, a leader of a pack, which, I mean, I am for my club, you know, you when you're looking at elections, you know, you want to make sure the right guy's there. And I think that... Uh, by sitting there and analyzing the candidates and, and finding people that have contributed a lot to the, the the party and, you know, the movement, I think that a lot of the times they try to dissuade people from jumping into races. And I think that that's why, you know, Club for Growth went and made that initial deposit to Alex Mooney's campaign and to Patrick Morsey's campaign. It's, it's to basically say, you know, clear the field. Uh, Let's stop using our money to beat each other's down and, and help Republicans, you know, uh, elsewhere. So I, I think it, it was trying to dissuade. Will that be effective? I mean, that's, that's something um, that we'll just have to see. But uh, I don't think that that played a factor in the Jim Justice uh, joining of the Senate race. So I, I think they, they also look down the road. They see the age of Shelley Moore Capito. They see if justice wins the age of justice. They want to make sure that the next round of people who could possibly be United States senators from West Virginia, especially with the balance, are the strongest possible people. I mean, I don't think they're just playing a short game. They're playing a long game. They want to see that, that you know, Patrick Morrissey, Mooney, are you know ready to take the mantle at some point because they are strong conservatives and that's what they want to see they 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 don't want to take any chances you know no, I, I, I got a that. text from a politically savvy person who told me that uh maybe club for growth gave 10 million to morrissey to keep him out of the senate race where they're backing mooney and that's also ah, so that's hey, a good point you, you run for that's governor here's eight figures you run for senate you don't get that possibility right hey here's the state of the democratic party right now in west virginia tell me the democratic front runner for governor nominee for the next election no idea and i will predict something i will I predict the winner is going to be a <laughs> the winner is going to be a republican i'm going out on a, on a limb here <laughs> saying the next governor of west virginia is going to be a republican <laughs> you bet on it the, yes <laughs> the, the limb there is what the over under is on percentage of the vote yeah. that a candidate would get what the spread's going to be i think on FanDuel you gotta you gotta bet uh, uh Ten thousand dollars to win, you know, twenty five cents. <laughs> but but name who's the who's the Democratic front runner for the re his Democratic name, nomination? His it, name, no idea. But I think it's the mayor of uh, Charleston. I think mayor of Charleston. I think the mayor of Charleston. That would probably be the most cities. prominent. That's the biggest city in the state. So I guess that's the most prominent Democrat at this point. Can right? anybody? Can anybody here or on Facebook name the <laughs> the mayor of Charleston? <laughs> I've seen his name in the news a couple times. But that doesn't it. cut it, Rob. Name do. the guy. That's the best I can do. <laughs>
That's it. <laughs> Alonzo, thank you. Good to see you. Uh, when is the, uh, the the dinner? Oh, Lincoln Dinner is on April 30th at 5 p.m. at, at the uh, Hollywood Casino. You can buy tickets at berkeleycountygop.com. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me.